Today, I'm going to explain what the Jamstack is with two full projects deployed with Vercel and Netlify. Hi, my name is Amir and this is Backbrace channel. Backbrace, let's code together. First of all, you need to know that in recent years, the concept of the Jamstack has gained significant traction among web developers as a modern approach to build websites. First, let's talk about the term itself, Jamstack. What is Jamstack? It stands for JavaScript, APIs and markup. That's it. The J4 JavaScript, the A4 APIs and the M4 markup. So these three technologies combined together form the Jamstack. So a stack is simply a collection of different technologies combined together to create your web applications. And uh, you may have heard of the MERN stack, the mean stack. Here we have the Jamstack. So you can use JavaScript APIs and markup to create your web applications. And it's all about moving away from the old school monolithic single piece architecture to something more modular and dynamic. And if you're scratching your head thinking what monolithic means, simply it means that the front end, the back end and the database are tightly coupled together. At the core of understanding Jamstack lies the distinction between static and dynamic in the web world. In the static approach, the content is pre-built or pre-computed, which actually reduces the need for an on-the-fly computation with each request, which means that you have pre-built assets available whenever the client asks for it. And this translates to faster and more cost-effective responses. However, dynamic involves constructing something on the spot, responding to each request as it comes in each time there is an API call. So for example, the client computer sends to the server. The server sends to the database to retrieve the data. Then the API JSON data is being parsed in your front-end framework. And let's say that you're using React framework. You have your JSX code being transpiled to JavaScript which is being embedded in the HTML file and then sent to the end user. So what do you think static components are? Well, they include things like audio files, video files, JavaScript for logic and CSS for styling. Now I know what you're thinking, JavaScript as a static asset? JavaScript actually behaves flexibly on web pages, but the actual code always stays the same in each update, which makes it like it's static. The basic rule of thumb here is calculate things ahead of time whenever you can, to avoid problems with performance, speed, and scalability. So think about it. If you can pre-compute the response, that's going to be better for you and your users. In the past, web servers had to do a lot of things like serving HTML pages, and by serving, I mean showing HTML pages on the screen, um, also dealing with static assets and managing API endpoints. But nowadays, you can use services like Google Cloud Storage, for example. Um, it can be used for all of your static assets, like image files, CSS, and so on. Now, the real logical question arises. Can we make these HTML pages static or pre-computed? And to be able to answer this question, you need to understand how web servers operate and how they render HTML pages. So let's say that there is a customer who is searching for a smartphone on your website. They enter the URL and the server fetches the data, formats an HTML response and sends it back fully rendered. This method, as you can see on the screen, is called server-side rendering or SSR for short. And evidently the reason for that is because the rendering happens on the server, not on the client. However, over the last decade or so, there has been a shift towards client-side rendering or CSR for short where the user also browses your website, enters the smartphone they're interested in, the client sends a GET request to the web server, then the web server sends a blank index HTML page with a reference to a JavaScript application. And what happens is that the client asks JavaScript for data. So JavaScript sends a GET request to a framework, let's say React, which by stroll sends a data query to the API server, then the database sends the phone data formatted in JSON within the JSX code, which is being transpiled via Babel. And finally, the product is being rendered to the user on the screen. And this, of course, is called client-side rendering for a reason, because the rendering happens on the client side and not on the server side like the previous method. And finally, there is a third method, which is called static side generation or SSG for short, where during the build time, the server pre-renders all pages, storing them ready for immediate access. 
This method combines actually the benefits of both previous approaches, the static side rendering and the client side rendering, but with even faster delivery times. So you see the calls from the build server to the API server happen so quickly because of the pre-rendered pages. And then you will have an immediate response sent to, let's say, Google Cloud Storage. And finally, the user will have an instant response to the query. So what does the Jamstack really deliver? It allows for faster websites, reduced server maintenance, because there is no server to maintain. Also enhanced security, because if there is no physical server, then you cannot hack it, right? Also improved scalability. These factors contribute to a better overall developer experience, thanks to simplified development and deployment processes. Consider the traditional setup. You have a web server like Apache, an application like WordPress, and a database like MySQL. This setup actually involves complex interactions between front-end, back-end, and database. But with the Jamstack, you streamline this process by decoupling these components and pre-building static sites to be served via global CDNs, or content delivery networks. So if you're considering whether Jamstack is right for you, you can think about what your website currently does and how it could benefit from this architecture. Um, it might require some changes and planning, I agree, but the advantages of Jamstack are compelling. My website actually uses Jamstack. I use Next.js to build my website. Everything is pre-built already. So whenever you want to check on something, whenever you want to inquire any information, you will do that simply by typing the command and you will have instant response. If you want to know about me, you will type about. Um, if you want to go to the help menu again, you can check out contact. You can check out the projects. So this website actually is built using the Jamstack architecture. And you can see that everything is pre-built already. I don't have any images or audio or video files, but you can apply the same thing if you have those already pre-built and you know saved as static assets to be rendered using any of the static site generators. So these are some of the most popular static site generators. Next.js, Hugo, Gatsby, um, Nuxt for Vue, Jekyll, and so on. Astro also is a popular one. Um, you don't have necessarily to use any of the static site generators. You can simply use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, as I'm going to show you in the next project. So as I said, we will have two different projects. One is going to be built using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to show you how simple it is to create a static website using Jamstack. And also we're going to uh, deploy that via Netlify. And in the second project, we're going to use Next.js and we're going to deploy this project to Vercel. All right, so that's what we're going to do in the next part. So thank you so much for watching this introduction. With that being said, let's go ahead and start creating our first project using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and deploy it to Netlify.